Hello, everyone. Welcome to QPixel Studio. Thank you, Felicia. My name is Haley, and we are tuning in live from Boston, Massachusetts, and we are ready to make some spring home decor. I thought it'd be perfect because spring is right around the corner, and it's March, uh, and March is National Craft Month. So I thought it'd be nice to do a little DIY project with you all and introduce you to the QPixel app if you are unfamiliar with it. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and down, download the QPixel app and enter this promo code right here, uh, exclusive to you guys. Hey, hey Haley, I'm so sorry. Are you able to turn up your mic? Audio is low? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, is that good? Should A little be. bit more. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me know if there's uh, another issue, but um, this is the promo code uh, exclusive to you all joining this Michaels class. Um, you'll get two weeks free uh, access to absolutely everything on the app. And if you continue with your membership after the end of the trial, sorry. Awesome, that was great. We can hear you. Yeah. We are good. Hard to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Is this okay? Okay. That's better. Sorry about that. Um, no should problem. I repeat? Yes. Just yes. yes. Okay. Well, if you missed this, my name is Haley, uh, and we are going to be doing some spring uh, home decor. I thought it'd be perfect because spring is around the corner, and it's March, and March is National Craft Month. So uh, I'm excited for this little DIY project uh, and introduce you to the Cupixel app if you are unfamiliar with it, if this is your first time hearing about Cupixel. I'm so excited for you. Go ahead and download the app and enter this promo code for two weeks free. Uh, this is an exclusive code for all of you joining the Michaels class. Um, and after you, uh, after the trial ends and you continue with your membership, you will be shipped this device stand for free. Uh, and we're going to be using this for the class today. But if you don't have this already, feel free to just grab like a tall cup or a stack of books or something to just elevate your phone and place it flat on top. So I am joined by Nick on the cameras and Shirley uh, on the Zoom chat. So if you have any technical questions, feel free to ask Shirley. And if you have any questions for me, Shirley can relay those questions to me right here, right now. So did I mention we're tuning in from Boston since everyone is sharing their location? We are live from Boston, Massachusetts, and it's cold and I can't wait for spring. So I think we're ready to get started, right? Okay, I do need to take a sip. Oh, my goodness. I'm nervous. Okay, apologies. So for materials, like I said, you'll need the Cupixel device stand, but if you don't have this already, that's totally fine. Uh, grab a tall cup or something tall just to place your phone on top of for the tracing technology, which we'll get into in just a second. I have a eight square inch wood panel here uh, ready to go. I've got my Posca paint markers. Uh, these are the medium tips, I think. Um, really great for working on wood uh, and a lot easier than painting with a brush, in my opinion. I love using these, so I'm very excited to uh, work with them today. You'll need a pencil for tracing and an eraser. And I always love to have a kneaded eraser, uh, especially when I'm working on wood, just to pick up that extra pigment uh, so that it doesn't blend in with my markers. So if we're all ready and we have the app downloaded, you can go ahead and open it up and you'll see this main feed right here. We are going to go to the bottom of the screen where you see those five tabs or those five icons, excuse me. And that center icon, that plus sign, my studio, is where we are going to go. So I will go back and repeat that for anyone who is coming in a little bit later. From the main feed at the bottom of your screen, that center plus icon, my studio, that's where we're going to be creating today. Uh, but everything else that you see on the app, these are artist-led experiences that use the technology that you're about to see. Um, and, you know, live and on-demand classes, but you guys get me in real time, one-on-one, -on -one, so it's your lucky day, I guess. I'm just kidding. Let's go to my studio. Let's get started. 
So you'll see that you have three tabs at the top of the um, My Studio Gallery Photos and Text. Photos where you can upload your own photos and create artwork out of your photos, which is really special. Uh, but we're gonna be working with the Gallery tab today. So you'll see all these different floral borders and frames and decals that you can work with to spruce up your text. And we're going to be using the text editor to create a text. So you could say home sweet home, hello spring, uh, home is where the heart is, rooted in love, whatever. You can get punny or you could just enjoy creating some floral art. You don't need to use the text editor, but that is what I'm going to be doing. What I like to do is start with my border or my frame so that I know when I place my text, I can uh, position it nice and centered. So like I said, I like to start with a border. I love this one. So I'm going to select floral border here. When you see that green check mark, you are good to head to trace. So press start. And how this technology works, let me bring that back up so you can see. Refresh. Boom. If all four corners of your wood panel or whatever it is you're creating on paper, canvas, if all four corners are in frame of your camera, and there is a contrast around these corners to help the app recognize it. Uh, the app can find your surface and superimpose whatever you want to trace right onto it. So if I were to move anything, as long as all four corners are still visible, it will just realign. But if you are working on uh, like a cup or something, you don't have the stand, feel free to turn Smart Trace off just for a simple projection. And you could also use the wide angle camera to capture more of your surface. So I'm gonna go back to Smart Trace and boom, we're ready to go. You have a transparency bar here to adjust the opacity. So you can see both your lines and the lines on your phone while you're tracing. And you could also use the drag icon to kind of position, scale, whatever it is that you want to trace uh, to your liking. So say you wanted to go back, actually, let me reset that. Say you wanted to go back to the artwork tab gallery and you like these floral icons and you kind of just want to place them wherever you'd like on your surface. You could do that with the drag feature, but I'm going to stick with this one, keep it simple. And from here, I'm just going to pinch to zoom in grab my pencil, look through my screen, and start tracing. And you don't have to be perfect. It's a bit of a learning curve. So if you're, you know, taking your time, well, of course, I would advise you to take your time. Don't rush through anything. Be patient with yourself. Enjoy the process. But just know you don't have to make this perfect. Uh, a lot of detail and lines and stuff like that we can kind of bring to life with our paint markers. And it adds character when you kind of, you know, let your own style shine through. Oh, something I want to mention as well. Um, I did not prime my wood. Like I didn't use any gesso or anything like that. Um, that of course will help keep your, you know, it'll create like a smooth surface for your paint markers, but it'll also prevent any bleeding with your paint markers. Um, I find that these, the thinner ones that I'm going to be using today, they are, whoops, they are good for wood because they don't bleed as much. Um, but something that I like to do, oh, you see that? Something I want to call out really quick. I'm going to interrupt myself. Uh, if you have a white background or a white table um, and you're working on a mat or a piece of paper or something like this to help the app recognize your wood panel or whatever it is you're creating on, 
uh, be mindful that it could maybe confuse this surface with the surface you're creating on, if that makes sense. But what you can do to avoid that from happening is turn auto track off. So just tap the screen and tap that icon at the bottom left. And if it's orange, you know that we won't be tracking your surface. So if you move, the image won't move along with it. So just be mindful of that. Keep your surface in the same position, or at least try to. So I'll turn auto track off and just work from here. Okay, I was saying something, I interrupted myself. What else is new? Nick, help me out. <laughs> I just focus so hard on the camera. Oh, what good are you? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Um, hmm. Oh, yes, I remember. Thanks for nothing. Um, <laughs> priming the wood um, with gesso is definitely an option, uh, but I did not do that uh, because I'm working with markers that are pretty good on this porous wood surface. Uh, they don't bleed as much as your thicker markers would. But another thing that I like to do, instead of kind of like priming my the wood, I work with the grain. So you can kind of feel, sometimes you can even see how the grain is kind of going this way. So when it comes to adding color, I'm kind of, or was it this way? Either way, I'll be mindful when I'm coloring to kind of color, go with the grain rather than against it. Something I wanted to call out before I uh, continued. Is there any chance you can repeat the process of how you're getting, getting to where you're at now at some point? Mm -hmm. I'll do that now. So we're working from my studio. So if you're on the main feed, you see all these different uh, cards here. The bottom of your screen, you see five icons. The center icon where you see that plus sign is my studio. That's where we're working from. So tap that tap gallery and you'll see a ton of different uh, floral frames, borders, uh, decals that you can work with. Uh, and you'll also see some text or you can create your own text with the text editor. We haven't gotten to that just yet. I'm still working on tracing my border, which is this one right here. So select the uh, decals or frame that you'd like to trace. You'll see that green check mark. You can press start. And if all four corners of your surface are in frame, the app is able to find your surface and superimpose right onto it. Good? All right. And also, um, you can say that the promo code, they can go to the menu uh, and tap subscribe now and then enter, I have an art set and put the promo there. But after the event, they don't have to do it now. Never mind. Okay, um, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you're just joining now, um, we have a promo code right here. If you uh, download the app and open up the app for the first time, uh, you can go to the menu at the top left of your screen. Turn auto track off. Uh, you can tap the menu at the top left of your screen and say that you have a promo code. Enter in this promo code that you see next to me. And you will get two weeks free on the app. All right, almost done with this first tracing. After this, I'm gonna go back to the artwork tab and I'm going to show you how to use the text editor. We'll trace some text as well.
Nick, can you see my lines okay? Uh, I'm showing the phone, but yeah, I can also see the, I can see the number. Okay. Just want to make sure I wasn't too using too light of a hand. Anyone have any plans for spring? I know a lot of people tend to like plan a vacation around that time because, you know, we're all just so happy that winter's over. Some people really love winter though. Not me. <laughs> Not me. I don't enjoy any of the winter sports. Uh, by any of them, I mean, I did, I went skiing one time and I don't know, I don't know how people who ski enjoy it. <laughs> um, that was so miserable for me. <laughs> That was a terrible, terrible experience. Staying home in spring? Yeah. Do some spring cleaning, right? Gardening? I don't know. I, I don't have a green thumb. Does anyone have a green thumb? I really don't. Mary's going to Paris. Wow. Someone's who's going to Paris? Ooh. Well, Bon voyage. <laughs> what were you going to say? Bon, bonjour, bon voyage. Uh, fun fact about, well, is it a fun fact? No, it's just a little, little bit about me. <laughs> These guys have been hearing it for a while now. I grew up, I spent my whole life thinking that I was like half French. Okay. Uh, wanted to go to Paris so bad, loved the culture. Uh, and when I got to high school, I had the option to either study Spanish or French. And I was like, well, let me, you know, let me, let me study French. Let me learn French uh, so that, you know, when I do, you know, go to Paris one day and uh, be one with my, my culture, my people, uh, I can speak fluently. Um, I found out recently that I'm not even French. I'm not French at all. I took like six years of French. I even went into college continued to study French and I'm not even French I'm not even a little bit French uh so enjoy your time in Paris let me know how it is and if I should still go I'm done tracing my floral border so I'm going to go back to the artwork tab and I'm going to create my text so back to gallery for just a second you'll see that you have this text here this is what I'm going to be using um, but I'll show you how you can create that in the text editor really quick. So if you wanted to follow along and create what I'm creating, you have this here, but let's go to the text editor really quick and let's type this in. Before you go. I already went. Okay. Can you go back to the home page and just show how you get to the text editor from the home page? Check this out, everyone. Uh, every time you trace, every time you use Smart Tracer, uh, even without Smart Trace on, Simple projection, uh, the app captures a time lapse for you. Uh, so you can see all your time lapses um, at the bottom of the main feed. I won't go there now, but um, you'll see your time lapses. You can go back and watch your time lapses, save them, share them, whatever. Uh, really cool thing that I had to mention. So uh, from the main feed, at the bottom of your screen, you see these five icons. The center plus icon is where we're working from, My Studio. Tap that. You'll see these three tabs up here. Photo, you can upload your own photo and create artwork from that. Uh, but we're just using the gallery and the text editor today. So what I just did was I went to the gallery and I selected one of these floral uh, borders or frames uh, to kind of frame your text. Um, so I traced this one, that's completely done. And I was saying that we're gonna go in and, well, I'm gonna trace uh, bloom because, you know, spring bloom, right? Um, so you can follow along by tracing that, or if you wanted to customize your own text, we're gonna go to the text editor. So tap text at the top right. And whatever you want your home decor to say, if you want it to say anything is, um, Sorry, what? something? They'll not be able to do it without using the code. Oh, okay. So that's, yes, something uh, to mention. You have Bloom here because if you uh, don't enter the promo code, 
will not have access to the text editor. Uh, so if you wanted to use this one, you can use this one. But for those of you that did use the promo code and want to customize with your own text, go to text, add text, you can say spring, <laughs> right? And then tap through the font and pick a font that you would like. I want to say bloom, tap through the font. Do a cursive font, you could do a graffiti font. This is the one that I'm using. So tap done. Same thing as in the gallery. Uh, when you see that green check mark, you know you're good to head back to trace. So go to start. Again, all four corners of my surface are visible to my camera with the contrasting background. So we are good to go. However, I am going to turn auto track off because I think this area is confusing the app a little bit, but I'm also going to use drag to kind of shrink my text or just kind of bring it up. I think I'll just bring it up. Yeah, I'm good. Nope. Okay, perfect. And then just like last time, pinch to zoom in and begin tracing. Bring my transparency down just a little bit so I can see my lines. But after I trace this, I'm going to have fun adding some color. And I'll show you my technique with these markers. They're very easy to use, very satisfying to use if you ask me. As you can see, I have a very loose hand when it comes to tracing. Um, so it's far from perfect and that's okay. Perfection does not exist, especially not in art, but keeping a loose hand I find helps your mind and body relax, right? But also makes tracing a lot quicker and a lot easier. But I know it's uh, it's like a rite of passage almost when you first start using the app, just kind of so much pressure and you're following it exactly. It's a learning curve. Uh, the more you trace, the more comfortable it'll be. It's just like another tool, right? Here's what I want to know. What's your favorite flower? Everyone has a favorite flower, I think. Um, and I'm starting to expose myself to more flowers. That's very basic before I was like, I love a rose. I love a red rose. Um, but I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to learn about flowers and, you know, expose myself to more flowers. And what I'm loving lately are, um, oh my gosh, what are they called? I love sweet peas, sweet pea flowers. Lilies, gorgeous orchids. I have an orchid at home that is just beautiful. Getting ready to grow again in the warmer weather. All right, zoom out. Anytime I'm done tracing anything, I like to bring my transparency all the way down, back up and back down, just to see that I have everything more or less aligned and where I wanted it to go. So Nick, do I have your permission to put the phone to the side? You do. I have his permission. All right, so. Just, just a quick uh, explanation. If someone doesn't have the stand for now, what, what they can do and what when can they get the thing? 
Mm -hmm. So um, if you don't have the device stand, uh, you can use a tall cup, place your phone. Sorry, let me just mention, because I know Shirley, I forget that Shirley is not uh, on the mic. So uh, Shirley made a great point to mention again, um, what to use if you don't have the device stand. You can use a tall cup, uh, just place your phone flat on top, a stack of books, basically anything tall that you can just elevate your phone on, just place it right on top and place your paper or your wood panel or your drawing surface, whatever it is that you're creating on right underneath. And you can turn Smart Trace off for just a simple projection, look through your phone and trace. Uh, but if you use the two week promo code right here, uh, exclusive to you guys, um, after the two week period, uh, if you continue with your membership, we will ship you a device stand for free. Uh, so you don't even have to worry about getting that. But um, Shirley, is that good? All right, perfect. So I'm going to put my phone to the side now and get started with the paint markers. Nick, is this a good area? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, I'm going to bring this closer. Is that good? Yep. Okay. And before I get started with color, I'm going to go in with my eraser and just clean up around the text. Any lines I don't want to include. And then clean up these lines a little bit. Something I love to do before I go in with color is use the kneaded eraser to kind of just clean up and pick up any extra pigment. Because if you have just like loose pencil, loose graphite kind of on your wood panel, it could one, smudge and two, blend in with your color a little bit um, and, you know, kind of dull it out. So I like to kind of just roll up my kneaded eraser, unless, Nick, you won't be able to see, huh? I can see it. Yeah? Okay. To roll up my kneaded eraser and just kind of, you know, it's so funny. It's It really is like you're kneading dough, right? So funny. You need one of these. Honey, yeah. Um, yeah, just cleaning up, picking up that extra pigment. But I can clearly still see everything that I want to go over and add color to. I'm going to start with the text because it'll just be easier for me to, you know, not have to avoid all of this down here. Uh, so start with that. And I'm thinking of making my text colorful. Nick, what do you think? Shirley, what do you think? Yeah. What color? Um, let's start with blue. Blue. Okay. I like it. I was thinking this one. Yeah, we like it. I like it. We're on board. All right. So I'm just going to grab my blue paint marker. By the way, I've already activated all of these. If you are using new markers, all you need to do, give it a shake and grab like a scrap paper or anything and press down until the paint comes to the tip. But now I'm just gonna get started and something that I mentioned earlier was just going with the grain, right? So I'm seeing that the grain is actually going this way. So when I color, I might wanna kind of follow the direction that the grain is growing in. But if we go up, you see this tiniest little amount of, of feathering. You know, those lines might not be as smooth, but I'll tell you one thing. Wood is a natural surface, right? It's, it's, it's alive. It's porous. Um, so no matter what, you might get a little bit of feathering. You might get a little bit of bleeding. I love the look of it. It's, it gives that rustic kind of handmade look um, that just separates you know, this creation from like any spring decor you find at home goods or something, right? It's special. You're making it yourself. You're taking the time to craft something 
And um, if you use it as decor, you know, that's your work. That's something that you made rather than bought. So I say, don't worry about any bleeding or feathering. And in a similar way, don't worry about mistakes, for lack of a better word, because they don't exist. They just give your artwork some character. And Shirley, I'm so sorry <laughs> if this noise is bothering you. Shirley does not like this noise. Wow, that one that one sent chills down my spine. I got it there. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna just apply more pressure just for you. Just for you, Nick. Happy birthday. All right. All good. Wow. <laughs> Shirley, do you think I should move on to the flowers then? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Shirley just told me that we are well within, you know, well halfway into the, the class. Let me just say that. So I want to move on to the flowers. I'll go back to the text. Uh, if I need to flip it around, I will. But, uh, you know, you can really get creative and create dimension and detail uh, within the flowers and the plants. And I think that's more exciting to see. So let's dive into that. So I've got a ton of different colors. Doesn't mean I'm gonna use all of them, but it might because I want to. I love all these different colors and I love using these to create, um, you know, variations of different colors as well. So I'm gonna grab my light green and over here, I'm gonna color in my leaves. I'm not gonna worry about making it perfect. Real quick. And then what I'll do is I'll go in with my darker green and add some detail and dimension. It's also a lot more pleasant on the ears, right? All right. Oh, with my darker green, I'll go right on the stem and at the base of the leaves and maybe create that little detail, that line, at the center. And you can go back in with that lighter color and kind of blend some more. You can go in with a third color if you'd like, maybe some yellow. I think I'll leave these, leave these leaves as is. Move on to maybe these guys down here. We'll just go in right with this darker green on the stems. I'm gonna assume these are tulips, but let's make them whatever flower we want. Being mindful not to rest my hand on any wet color. And then I'll go in with my lighter green be careful not to go right on top of that wet, dark green. If you are going to kind of blend some colors together, I always advise you work from light to dark rather than from dark to light uh, because while it's not gonna ruin your marker, it might stain with a darker color um, and it will go away the more you use it, but just something to be mindful of. Um, as I go in with a lighter color, <laughs> but 
I'm going to take some yellow and create some little detail, some dimension, almost like doing some impressionist painting, but with markers. Let's move on from green and add some color to these flowers, shall we? I love this orangey red color. I think I'll mix it in with this really light peach color. So I'll start with this one. Go all over. I, yeah, so Shirley asked, do I always start with the light? I would advise, yes, you don't have to. You might find that uh, you have a better technique or one that works better for you if you kind of work from dark to light. The reason why I like to work from light to dark is because when you kind of blend and layer these colors, um, you're not harming a darker color as much uh, by going on top of a lighter color, if that makes sense. Uh, whereas if you were to go in with this really vibrant orange and then right after with this light, light peach color, um, the light peach color might kind of turn into this orange for a little bit, right? You get that dark color on the tip of your marker it will just kind of create a bit of a um, mixing situation with the next few uses, if that makes sense. I'm keeping my darker color more focused at the base of the flower, the bud, and then also at each petal that kind of or the separation between each petal. Then again, I'm just gonna go against my own advice, going with a little bit of yellow, but I'm also being careful to not go too heavy or with too heavy of a hand on, on top of this orange. You don't apply as much pressure, you get less mixing on your paint marker. All right, let's keep going. I think I'll do a nice pink and purple situation. These colors next to each other, the purple will make the orange pop and vice versa. So I'll go in with the pink first because it's lighter. And it does help to kind of, you know, when you're going in with that lighter color first, great or keep a separation between each petal. So I know I left that blank because I'm gonna add some shadow, some darker color to, again, create that separation. Let's see. But if you work with colors, I know I'm going on top of the dark with a lighter color, but that's okay. It's all right. As long as you're working with colors that are um, in the same color family, they're close to each other. You know, if you're trying to blend from one color to the next, you're not going to do that with blue and orange, right? Complementary colors. They're not going to blend. You're just going to get brown uh, by blending the two of them together. So if you take pink and purple, and you go in with your light pink on top of some purple, and your pink might be a little bit more purple for a little bit. That's okay. It's definitely a lot better than if you were to get some uh, orange in your green or some uh, blue in your yellow or something like that. Um, just something I wanted to shout out. These little guys, I have no idea what they'd be. I, I see berries of some sort. So I'm going to take some red going to quickly kind of fill those in. You can get creative. You can turn them into flowers. Maybe if I go in with some pink, they can be little flower buds. Maybe just the light green on these guys. I don't have as much room to work with on the smaller petals. Mm 
Do you need um, the fork of that closed pin to even acrylic the painting or canvas? Uh, can you use these on acrylic canvas? Yeah. Absolutely, you can. Yeah. Um, you can use them. You can use these in mixed media projects. They work great. Um, I actually recently did a very, well, not very large, but it's a pretty big um, abstract painting. Uh, I think it's on like a 24 inch canvas, 18 by 24 inches. Um, and I did a layer of paint for the most part first, like kind of painted in sections, shapes, fun, funky abstract shapes. And then afterwards, well, I did leave it alone for like six years because I was like, I don't know what to do next. Uh, best part about art, you know, keep your, keep your in progress artworks, uh, because six years later, you might have the motivation to get back to it. But, um, I went back in with these markers, not these specific ones, but the Posca markers. Um, and it was great. It was great. And I just continued layering and layering and layering. Um, you can use these on glass, paper, canvas, whatever. And yeah, you can use them in a lot of mixed media projects as well. So very versatile. Changing my mind about this green. It's a little too light. So I'm going to add a darker green here. All right, keep going. I think we'll start with some yellow on these ones. Oh, see, see what happens? You, get, you kind of get a little bit of a mix. I'm getting a little bit of orange and a little bit of green. But the more I use this yellow, the quicker I'll get back to its original color. But sometimes it can kind of create the look that you want it to, you know? I was gonna go in with some green after anyways. So it's like a little happy accident, but sometimes you might not want that to happen. It does help to keep a kind of like a scrap paper. So say you do go on, on a darker color or a stronger color uh, with a lighter color, you can kind of quickly get that off of there before it dries. There's a lot of ways that you can work around it. I'm gonna go in with this lighter green right on top Create some little streaks and dimension. And if you find that your marker is kind of drying too, it's nice. I'm using a match that I can just easily clean up after this, but pretend that's a piece of paper. Uh, all you need to do is kind of reactivate the paint just by pushing down on the nib and bring that fresh paint to the tip. All right, and good. I think I'll add just a touch of this darker green of the stem and the base of each leaf. All right, I'm just going to finish up with my green now. I have one last little area right here. How long does it take for the paint to dry? Jane is asking. Janie? Jane. Jane. Hi, Jane. That's a good question. How long does it take for the paint to dry? Um, 
depends on what surface you're working on. If you're working on a wood surface like this, wood is so incredibly porous that it's going to soak that color up very quickly. So let's give it a feel. This is already dry. This orange flower, this pink flower already dry. These little berries already dry. And let's try this these leaves are already dry. So they do dry quite fast on wood. They, I find that they are quicker drying than um, regular acrylic paint because they're a bit more, well, they're a lot more watered down. Um, and that water will help it to dry a little bit quicker because once it's exposed to oxygen, You get the gist, right? But yeah, very, very quick, but you still want to be mindful of um, dry time. If you just went on top of um, a certain area with color, you're moving to a section nearby. Don't rest your hand on that wet paint because it will pick it up and then you could kind of smudge it elsewhere. Um, but it is very, very quick and dry. All right, let's add some color to these flowers. I'm going with this yellow in the center here. I think I need to do a white flower. I look at this one and I just see like a daisy. I'm just gonna go all over. And if I wanted to build dimension, I could use really any color I wanted to, if I wanted to kind of create both dimension and like a little pop of color, any color would work. The blue would look great. Yellow would look great. I'm keeping with that quick, for lack of a better word, messy kind of approach. I love it personally, adds character. You could also let the wood be what builds dimension, right? You see all those streaks kind of coming through. It is darker than the white, so it could be cool. But I think I'll go in with this peach kind of towards the center. You might see a little bit of a different color. And for this one, hmm, yeah, blue, these two dark blues. Start with my lighter blue. Maybe it's just the blue, right? <laughs> when we're working on the letters, maybe it's just this blue. Because that is, that is loud. That is a crisp sound. <laughs> All right, moving on to these guys. We're almost done. Of course, I could continue adding more and more and more flowers. I could trace more flowers after this. Um, I could freehand add some flowers. I could just, you know, let my let my uh, creative gears take over and just go nuts with it. It's you don't have to use it for home decor. Um, this is a great way to just know that you can, right? With the app, with uh, these products, these materials, uh, you can create some really amazing things, but you could also just enjoy playing around with it, right? I'm going to go in with more orange and red. And these tulips here. So I just want to give you all 
uh, heads up or the time now to uh, ask any questions that you might have before we wrap it up. Any specific questions for me or for Shirley or for Nick? Let's not leave him out of the equation. All right. Nick, what do you think for this last one? What color? Um, we already did the we already did blue. Obviously green kind of strange. Mm. I think a pink. A pink but with some red. What do you think? Yeah. All right. I also want to mention that um, we have tons of different experiences, artist-led experiences on the app um, that, of course, continue to explain the technology and um, give you some you know, creative and technical inspiration. But we have a lot of home decor using similar products, um, home decor on wood. Uh, we have a whole section for special for craft month. So there's so many different ways that you can get crafty with the technology aside from, you know, just like your traditional art, your drawing, your painting. Um, we have a challenge, a creative challenge going on right now that are always super fun. We do these every month. Um, and the challenge this month, because it's craft month, is to get crafty. So just do something outside of your traditional drawing and painting on paper or canvas. If you ask me what we're doing right now, would be a great craft. So if you're creating along with me, you didn't hear it from me, but you could easily take a photo of the creation you made here today and upload it to the um, spaces tab of the March challenge. The Spaces tab, by the way, on any experience, any artist-led experience, and on My Studio, you should see it on My Studio as well. It's the fourth tab at the bottom of your screen um, when you're in an experience or My Studio. You can take a picture of your creation and share it with the community. Everyone else can see it and comment. So you're kind of, you know, you're not just connecting with us here artists that work here and guide you through the experiences. You're connecting with each other. And it's a really, really special, beautiful thing. It's my favorite part about the app, seeing what you guys create and uh, seeing how you inspire each other because you inspire me, that's for sure. Anytime I see someone post something, whether it's for one of my experiences or in general, so cool to see. It's so cool to see people comment on each other's artwork and ask each other questions. It's like your one-stop shop for creative inspiration. That is a noise. I'm so sorry. We're almost done. <laughs> Sorry? Yes. Um, so something else I want to mention. We have a whole section on uh, tutorials and features explaining how to use the technology, explaining how to navigate the app, um, you know, walking you through every single feature that we have to help you on your creative journey. We only have an hour and there's a lot 
there's a lot to go over. I want to tell you everything, but you know, I also want to just dive right into the creation. So, um, I think I'll go in with a darker blue just to make it pop some more. Yeah, I think I'll do that. But uh, I will say I am I'm done with my little spring home decor. Uh, I I do like how it turned out. I do want to add some dimension to the text. But um, anything else we should mention, Shirley or Nick? No, maybe you can add Thing, yeah, if you have any uh, questions before we wrap up and say goodbye, uh, please put them in the chat now. Um, really quick, what else could I mention while you guys? Yes. Uh, again, if you don't have the stand, you didn't work with the Qpixel device stand today, um, enter this promo code, get 14 weeks free access to everything on the app. Get a feel for it, see how you like it, see how you can incorporate it into your, your own uh, creative endeavors. Um, and then if you continue with your membership after the 14 days trial is over, we will ship you a device stand for free. So uh, another thing I wanna mention is that you can share your membership with three other people. Uh, so if you put it that way, that's like mere pennies split between four of you. Um, every month and you can all connect and create with each other as well. It's really cool. Uh, we go live twice a week, by the way. We go live on Tuesdays in the afternoon. We call that our quick little creative break where we all kind of take a nice creative break together uh, and just enjoy some doodling or some explore different techniques or different tools. Uh, and then we also go live on Thursday evenings, uh, six o'clock Eastern time, five o'clock Central time. Uh, to you know, do a full project, kind of like this, right? Um, but we use spaces within the app to communicate. It's really fun. We see some people that are like joining, they're joined by their families. They share the membership with their families. And it's like a little paint party, a little art party um, there and here. So it's really cool. Uh, I definitely invite you to join me um, during these lives. I'd love to see you. Um, continue to connect and ask me any questions or, you know, get to know me. I'm not so bad. And I'd love to get to know you all. Uh, Shirley, any questions? No. No? All right. Well, I want to thank you all so much for joining me and creating with me today. Happy spring. Happy craft month. We'll be joining you again on April 15th uh, for some more botanical art, but it'll be a little bit different, different style, different medium, different approach that I'm excited for. Um, and I hope to see you on the app uh, as you explore your 14-day trial. If you have any questions while using the app, you can always reach out to our support team by tapping the question mark icon at the top right of your screen, correct? Yeah, top right. Okay, um, yeah, we are here to support you with anything that you may need. Um, thank you so much for creating with me today. Like I said, happy spring, happy craft month, and I hope to see you very soon. Bye.